Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and in today's tutorial we're going to be tackling a hugely popular into the Spider-Verse type of material recreation using my favorite, your favorite, I'm in love with it, Sketch and Tune in Cinema 4D. So we'll be covering how you can build up your own type of Spider-Verse texture and at the end of the tutorial stay tuned if you do not have Sketch and Tune because I'll show you a quick and easy way you can actually use this same workflow and adapt it to Cinema 4D Lite, which comes free with After Effects. So let's dive into it. My spidey sense is tingling. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, I wanna show you the still of the style that I'm gonna be going for. There's a bunch of different kinds of shaders and, and different lighting styles that are throughout the Shaderverse movie. Uh, but what I'm looking for is this kind of look here. We got this really nice rim light going on. You can tell we have these, you know, one of the two of the main things of the, you know, Spider-Man shaders, we have the halftone dots, and then occasionally you'll see nice little like halftone lines kind of deal. Uh, but this is what I'm going to be going for is this kind of look with the hot uh, rim light. And I want to just mention this video by Jean Dennis Haas. Uh, I hope that's how you pronounce that. Uh, but it's the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Animation Analysis. I just think this is really, really cool because what it does is it shows you all of these really cool traditional kind of 2D animation techniques. And here's a really good still where you have those like half, uh, half tone like lines and then the dots. We have like some, you know, specular half tone dots here or like the webbing kind of texture on the suit. Uh, and we got this really nice painterly texture as well. It almost looks like it's painted on that looks really good. But anyways, this video, I just want to point out, it's really cool if you want to study how they're adding nice little, you know, really detailed 2D cell animation techniques into the world of 3D. And I just think that uh, this movie is really hopefully going to spark a lot of interest in getting traditional, you know, hand keyframe or hand drawn cell animation into the world of 3D just because of how extremely popular this movie was. Uh, but basically, you get a good idea of, you know, the, the overall style of Spider-Verse as well as the specific look that I'm going to be going for. It's this guy and not the little dark, uh, dark Spider-Man. I'm, I don't know what the name of these Spider-Mans are, but this main one is the one we're going to be going for and breaking down using Sketch and Tune. So let's jump into that. Okay, so let's start by creating our material that will be the Spider-Verse material. So, uh, verse uh, material. There we go. And I'm going to turn off the color. And we'll leave on the reflectance for now, but basically where we're going to do a bulk of our working with shaders is in the luminance channel. So I'm just going to turn that on and let's just go and drag and drop this onto our shader ball. Now, if you don't have a shader ball handy, uh, all you need to do is a simple search on the Googles for shader ball C4D free. I believe this is the Corona shader ball, but there's the Arnold shader ball. There's a ton of free downloadable shader balls you can get out there. To, and it's and it's really great to use a shader ball to figure out like how your texture looks on different types of surfaces and curved surfaces and flat surfaces and all that good stuff. So just wanted to say that right from the start, download your own shader ball so you can follow along. Uh, but we're in our luminance channel. And what I'm going to do is since I know I'm going to be layering up a lot of different shaders, I'm just going to go ahead from the get go and just load up a layer shader. And if you've never used a layer shader before, basically what this allows you to do, if I click on this button, is it dumps you into a system where you can build up stacks of layers of effects like layers in Photoshop. So this is really, really great to be able to use to say stack up a bunch of different noises or in our case stack up a bunch of different kind of cell shaders and, and other types of shaders like that. So let's first go and grab our cell shader. Okay, so sketch and tune, cell shader. And again, I just wanna reiterate that at the end of this tutorial, I'll show you how you can do this in Cinema 4D Lite or any other version of Cinema 4D that does not have sketch and tune. Okay, so keep that in mind. 
Uh, one important thing to know about the cell shader as far as working with this in the viewport is that if I go ahead and render this view, you're going to see that what we see in the viewport and what actually renders is completely different. So when working with the cell shader and I noticed, and I mentioned this in a lot of my sketch and tune tutorials, what we're going to do is bring up the interactive render region so we can actually get a accurate representation of what our cell shader looks like on our object. So I'm just going to go to my render button here and just go to interactive render region. And then I can just readjust the bounding box here. And this little arrow is basically your quality slider. You can see if I bring this low, we're going to get the super 8 bit, 8 bit pixelated kind of deal. But if I crank this all the way up to the top, we're going to have full res, which is going to be really great. Okay. So we got this so far and I'm just in standard render. Uh, but now what we can do is start adjusting this cell shader here. So I'm going to click on the little box there. And here is the diffuse channel that, uh, diffuse gradient that is controlling how our cell shader looks. And right now the light source defaults to our camera view. So it's almost as if our camera is shooting a light straight out flat at our object. And that's pretty boring. So what I'm going to do is instead of using the camera as the light source, I'm going to use lights as a light source. And since we don't have a light currently in our scene, I'm just going to go ahead and create one. And I'm just going to create a nice area light. And let's make this a target light. So what I'm going to do is just add a target tag to this and have this just target our sphere. So it's always going to be looking at our sphere. And now what I can easily do is go ahead and move this out. And basically what's going to happen is this light is always going to be facing and looking at our object here. Okay. So here's our camera. Here's our light. Let's just move this up, get a nice like 45 degree angle here, something like that. So we get a good representation of how this shader looks and we'll go back into our perspective view and let's go ahead and let's turn on some soft shadows for this. Uh, because in the spider verse, we got some like really nice soft shadows, uh, not, not the hard shadows you'd think of. Even the cell shading is very soft. It's not very sharp like this. So what we're going to do is with, uh, in this shade, uh, the cell shader, first things first, let's, let's turn on the shadows so we can actually see the shadows, uh, show up here. And the next thing we're going to do is change the shading from just a linear step knot to smooth. So we're just going to smooth out all of these knots. I'm just going to click all these knots and change them to smooth. Let me just remove this knot. So it just goes from black to white. So just a smooth knot there. And then for the diffuse, I'm going to do the same thing. Twirl this button down, just click that little arrow and just select. I think I can, oh, maybe not. Maybe I can select all of these knots at once. Nope. Okay. Let's just, just select all of these, change them to smooth. So you're going to see we're getting the smooth interpolation between these gradient knots. We have a much smoother type of representation of our uh, cell shading here. And now is where we can start to add our little Spider-Man colors. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is just double click on this object. And I actually have that still up that I showed you off the top. And I'm just going to sample some of these colors. So first thing I want to do is get the really dark shades of red. So right there and hit OK. And then for this middle knot, let's go and grab this, you know, medium red and then some highlight red. I'll just grab, grab the uh, eye drop and get one of these like maybe light pinky kind of colors there, something like that. And if I wanted to, I could add maybe another knot here. So this is like kind of in between this really dark and the medium uh, type of red. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is sharpen these knots just a little bit. So let's just sharpen these up by grabbing these little circles and weighting the, the, uh, the gradation from instead of like being smack dab in the middle. So we have even distribution. We're going to, we're going to weight it more towards the dark side. And you can see we have this sharper, but yet still soft type of great, uh, type of color change, color gradation here. I'm going to do the same thing for this uh, little circular knot there. And so now you're starting to see the cell shading banding, which is nice. So we just want a hint of that, just very subtle. And maybe we'll weight this like that and maybe move 
these around just so we have less of this highlight maybe. And we can play around with you know, how this is weighted on each of these gradient knots here and kind of see how that looks. But I think I'm liking this. And uh, just for getting like really nice stylized sh uh, cell shader effects, I haven't said shell shader, shader yet, which is great, cell shader. <laughs> and just to be able to smooth these out, really adds a lot to your sketch and tune render. So I always encourage you to not just use the uh, typical uh, linear or step kind of interpolation that basically just goes from one color to the next without any smoothing whatsoever. But just adding a little bit of that smoothness really adds a lot uh, of style and uh, customization to your cell shader. So it just smooths it out just a little bit and just that little bit really goes a long way. Uh, maybe for this highlight, maybe not so not so bright, but basically there you go. We have our nice little sh uh, spider verse kind of shader there. It's not exactly a hundred percent accurate as far as like we could definitely brighten this up, but I'm gonna use some like hue and saturation later on. Uh, but this is getting pretty close. We got our shadow, we got our diffuse, and we got our lights turned on and our shadows. So that's basically all we need to do for this cell shader currently. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add our lines. So those little halftone lines, and basically from what I've kind of researched is the, the lines happen where the shadows are, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab yet another layer shader because what I'm gonna do is layer up the lines with another shader, and I'll get into that. Uh, very very soon here, but basically here's our layer. I'm just gonna double click to rename this and I'm just gonna rename this lines Okay, and I'm gonna click in the little box here and here's a whole another layer system here Okay, so here's where I'm gonna go and grab my uh, Surfaces and grab tiles and that's cut off. So let me just move this up shader uh, Surfaces tiles all the way down there and now what I'm going to do is go into this tiles and I can just rename this lines because that's what uh, this is going to uh, ultimately be. And by default, it's this ugly checkerboard kind of thing with these ugly colors, god awful colors, like they couldn't have picked better colors for this. Uh, anyways, what we're going to do is go in instead of the little grid, we're going to choose lines one. Okay, so we're, we got this all set up. And now basically what we're gonna do is just, let's get rid of these ugly, ugly colors. Let's change the grout color to white. And then for all of the other lines, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is choose different grayscale values of, for, for these lines here. And I'll show you why that's gonna matter a little bit later on. It's because with this, we can actually get different variation shades of the line so it's not so uniform. And if I turn on this randomized color, it's gonna randomize which of those colors are being selected for each of the lines here. So it just adds, it breaks up the uniformity of the colors there. And now what I'm gonna do is uncheck the bevel. We don't need bevel going on here. And I'm gonna just increase this grout width. And now what we're gonna see is now we kind of have even spacing for the most part here. And what I'm gonna do now is just bring this global scale way down because this is way too big of a line. So let's try like 10 and see how that looks, all right? So now we have our lines. They're orientated in the U. Uh, but basically what you wanna do is have this lay flat, projected flat on your object. And typically to do that, you would go into your actual uh, material tag or texture tag here and change the projection. The only problem with that is, if we change the projection of the entire material, it's gonna change the projection of everything else that we add on here, all of the shaders, and we don't wanna do that. All we wanna do is just add a different projection for just the lines. So to just isolate the change in material projection to just the lines, what I'm gonna do is go back into my luminance channel, jump back in the layer shaders, and go and grab something called a do, do, do projector, okay? Now, what the projector does, if I jump into that little box here, is allows you to change the projection of a specific texture. Now, we already built our lines layer shader, so what we're gonna do 
is just go into our lines layer. Let me rename this lines layer, okay? And I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna copy that shader. And what I can do at that point is just delete the lines layer shader, go into the projector, and on this little button, just say paste shader. So what that's gonna do is load up that line shader into the projector, and now, the great part about the projector is now I can individually just change the projection of that line shader. So if I want this to be completely flat, what I can do is choose flat, and you can see what's going on there, or I can just do frontal. And what that's gonna do is make it super flat and always kind of face the direction of the camera. So it depends on what kind of thing you're looking for. I think for the kind of cartoony type of look, maybe you want this to be, you know, the lines to be independent of the actual uh, object or the rotation of the camera or anything like that. So it's kind of super toony. So we can go and maybe just choose this projection frontal. So it's always gonna stay like this. So the problem with this is, is the lines are pretty horizontal. So what we can do is maybe rotate this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is go into the lines layer and go to effect. And what I'm gonna do is just add a transform. And here's where I can adjust the angle of the lines to say, you know, 28 degrees or whatever you want to do, whatever what type of angle you want. And there we go, okay? So we got our lines, we got our lines angled. We have our lines always facing towards our camera because of that frontal projection. Again, if you want just the flat, you could also do that as well. And that'll kind of stick to the material for the most part. But I'm just gonna go for frontal. And now we can go back into our main layer shader. And actually, let's just rename this layer shader uh, Spider-Verse, okay? So we go into the Spider-Verse, into the shader, into the shader-verse, and there's our projector. And I'm just gonna double click on this and just name this lines uh, group, okay? So this is just gonna hold all of our lines, all right? So now what we need to do is limit the lines to just the darker shaded areas of our object, okay? So what I'm gonna do is grab a folder and I'm gonna place this lines group in that folder and I'm gonna grab a new cell shader. Actually, what I can do is just duplicate this cell shader here. And to duplicate a shader, what you're gonna do is hold the command or control key down, click and drag on that box, and that will allow you to duplicate a shader. If you click and drag on just the text, you're, you're not gonna get anything. Make sure you're clicking on this little box and that'll allow you to duplicate that. So what I'm gonna change this to, if I go into this cell shader, I'm gonna remove the shadows, and what I'm gonna do is just remove these gradient knots and just make this black and white because basically what I'm gonna do is make this into a mat, just a black and white mat, all right? And it's gonna be controlled by the lights as well. So basically what I can do is use this new cell shader and use this as a kind of thing we can multiply the lines on top of. And now you can see that we're actually removing the lines in the darker areas. So what I'm gonna do is go into my cell shader, right click and invert that gradient. And now what you can see is I can adjust the kind of gradient knots here, just get this to where the darker areas are, okay? Now one thing that helps for this is using this back facing and what the back facing does is allows this gradient to go in the front and the back of the object. So without this on, this gradient is just going to span the front of this object. So back facing allows us to go and span the gradient from the front to the back. And this allows us to just have this fine little slice of the lines just in the darker areas of our object here. Okay, so there's our lines. We can go into our folder and let's just rename this lines folder. And now what I can do is just change the blending mode of this folder to say burn, okay? And now what you'll see it's very subtle, but you can see lines right here. Let me just zoom in here. But there's our lines in the darkness right there. 
And if that's a little bit too subtle, maybe we just adjust our gradient knots here in the diffuse just a little bit so we get more of the line texture there, okay? So now we got our lines, let's go and get some dots. Those little dots, like halftone dots. And if you notice in that still in that little uh, video I showed you, uh, where you, and it's very subtle, but it's almost like the scales on the mesh of the the costume is only shown by like specular highlights. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'm going to do is load up the little half tony looking dots or just dots in general in the reflectance here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just change this specular to like a very uh, sharp, uh, maybe actually not sharp yet. Let me, let me just build this up as a just wide kind of specular here. So something like this. So very wide, maybe not so uh, big on the strength there, but just something subtle like that. And what I'm going to do is this is kind of just making this all a little washed out. So what I'm going to do is just grab a reddish kind of color here, maybe something like this. And now we have that as the color and maybe shrink this width down a little bit, inner width down a little bit there too. So just something like that, just a little sharp kind of thing, a little bit more subtle and you can barely see it, right? If I turn this on and off, it's very subtle, right? Now what I'm going to do is to get that kind of uh, mesh highlight of those little uh, halftone dots. What I'm going to do is go into the layer mask of our specular. And here's where we can mask out the specular highlight using a texture. And the texture I'm going to use is in the surfaces. We're going to grab the tiles again. Again, it's cut off. I'm sorry. But let's go to our surfaces. Tiles It's right at the very bottom there. And again, we're going to get our super ugly checkerboard here. And you can see how the checkerboard texture is kind of masking out our specular. We can see that represented on our texture now. So what I'm going to do instead of these squares, I'm going to choose circles two. And you can tell the difference between circles one, where it's very linear and lined up, and circles two, where it's more of like a honeycomb kind of deal, and change the tile colors to uh, just again, different values of grayscale, just so we have a little bit of variance as far as how this is going to look. So let's add even more. Let's have one bright white, one medium gray, and let's randomize that color. So it looks like a disco ball and uncheck that bevel there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is make the grout width a little bit bigger. So our dots are smaller and then maybe just decrease the bevel width a little bit there as well. So maybe something like 20, nice even round numbers. And now we're just going to scale all of this down to say about 10 and see how that looks. So now we have our very small dots. Maybe we can increase or decrease the grout width a little bit, maybe something like that. And I think that's looking pretty good like that. And now what we can do is maybe create a whole nother specular here that's a little bit brighter. So this is going to be subtle and let's just go and copy and paste that default specular. So this is going to be the, uh, the subtle highlight and this will be like the hot specular highlight here. And for this new hot spec, what I'm going to do is maybe grab like a pinkish kind of color and let's make the width much smaller and make the strength much higher to like 100%, okay? And bring the inner width down, maybe the fall off a little bit down too. And let's crank up the brightness to like 150 or something like that. So what you're seeing is we're having this subtle kind of specular hit with the dots. And then we have this really hot, bright spot right about there, okay? And maybe we bring this to say 160. So we got that really bright specular. Now what we can do is maybe the dots in this specular uh, is going to be a little bit bigger. So if I decrease this number, we're going to get bigger dots. Okay. So maybe 20% and what I can do is maybe just change this to 25 and let's go into the original subtle dots and make these smaller. So to make the dots smaller, we'll just increase the grout width. 
And, and you can see they're really small now. And it almost looks like a half tone, right? Where we have the bigger dots and the smaller dots. I think maybe this is a little bit too small. Okay, so maybe something like that. And if we really want to layer this up, maybe we have the big dots, medium sized dots, and then small dots, okay? So maybe this will be the mid sized dots. And let's just decrease the overall width here. Okay, and let's copy and paste the medium sized dots. And this can be the small dots, okay? And this will have a more wider width here, all right? And we'll just make these smaller. And again, to make them smaller, we'll just increase the grout width here. Okay, so something like that to say 65. And now if I kind of bring in the width here a little bit, you can almost see we have like a half tone kind of thing going on where we have different size dots kind of going across the surface of our little shader ball here. Okay, so that's kind of faking a half tone by layering up different types of uh, little dots here. Okay, and we can even uh, decrease the overall strength so the small dots are a little more subtle and maybe decrease the specular strength of these guys. And really, let's let's bring this to maybe 200. We get really hot there. Boom, something like that. 85, and then maybe bring this up to like 120. And there we go. We could tweak this forever, but this is looking pretty good, I would say. And let's just go ahead now, and let's go back into our luminance and start layering up some more things. So we have our uh, our half tone dot kind of deal. We have our lines, and if we go into our Spider-Verse texture, maybe we'll bring the burn level down just to make this a little bit lighter, a little bit more subtle. And what's actually happening is I don't like this black background here. It's a little bit dark, and it might, you know, it, it's kind of screwing up how I'm viewing some of the shadows here and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is right-click on this little arrow and choose Alpha Mode, and now I can just see this object with the background, that little uh, viewport grid. So now I can see, okay, I'm seeing more of this kind of texture there. Maybe we can go and go to our four up view, bring this light around so we can see how this looks with a different light view. So that's looking good. And maybe our shadow is a little bit too dark. So what I'll go is go to my cell uh, shader and just lighten up those shadows a little bit. Now you can see a little bit better those, uh, those, those lines right there. Okay, cool. So again, uh, the, the style I'm going for is this. So we need to get this really nice hot uh, rim light going on here, all right? So what I'm gonna do is layer up a bunch of different shaders again. So let's go into our luminance, go into the Spider-Verse, Shader-Verse here, and build up our rim light here, okay? So let's go and create a new folder and drag and drop this outside the lines folder and we'll name this rim highlight okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the same kind of technique where i'm using the cell shader set to black and white to use this as a mask or to use it with blending modes basically to isolate where on my object the rim highlight will be okay so what i'm gonna do is grab this cell shader command click and drag and just place this in the rim highlight and what i'm gonna do is just turn off everything else even the reflectance and now you can see what the cell shader is doing just set to black and white. And you can see how we're using this with the multiply mode for the lines to just have the lines show up in the white areas of our cell shader. Okay. But what I'm going to do is use this cell shader in conjunction with a Fresnel because basically what I want is just a rim highlight right here on this side of my object. Okay. So let's go and grab a Fresnel. Okay, and now if I use this cell shader and set this to layer mask, what this is gonna do is isolate the Fresnel just to the white area, the bottom here, of this cell shader here. So what I want is this to be a rim light, like a top left rim light. So what I'm gonna do is just invert the gradient knots here. And now if I adjust this, you can see that now the highlights just in the top left, or this is our Fresnel here, basically. So here's the Fresnel. Let's bring this up here, and let's see what that looks like. You can see just a 
little bit of rim light going on here. So just like that. And this is exactly what I'm looking for is a nice, hot, specular highlight right about here for the rim light. I can even change the color here to maybe a little bit of pink, add another gradient, not make that a little white. So now we have something like this. We got this nice bright highlight there. So there's the highlight. Now what we can do is turn everything back on. So I'm just going to turn on the highlights. Let's turn it back on the reflectance here. And let's set this rim highlight to add. Okay, so we're just going to add that highlight on top of everything else. Now we got this really nice bright specular hit here. And if we want a little bit more of that, basically what we'll do is just move these gradient knots and we're going to get even more of that specular highlight. And it's actually going to reach further as well. Okay. We can adjust this as much as we want. And I think I want maybe a little bit of more white in here. So let's just move this down something like this. See what that looks like. And that's pretty, that's a pretty big highlight. So let's just move all the Fresnel uh, gradient knots a little over to the left a little bit more so it's showing less and I'm digging that I think that's looking pretty dang good and we could tweak this every all of these things we could tweak forever but I'm not gonna I'm gonna spare you right so basically what this setup does is allows you to use the basically the diffuse level or wherever the diffuse is use it for now so there's always gonna be a highlight no matter where the light is so if I go and move this light, say, down into the right, maybe something like that. You're going to see there's my hot rim light right there. Okay. So we're always going to get a really nice rim light action going on, no matter where our actual light is in our scene, because it's always based off of that cell shader that is being driven by the lights in our scene. Okay. So now let's go back into our Spider-Verse material here. And basically what I want to do is use the same kind of setup for a backlight. Now, if I bring back my reference, you can see we have our bright rim light here. And then even here, we have this really nice rim light that's a little bit more faded out around the other part of the body here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is recreate that using the same kind of setup. So I'm just going to create a new folder. And this will just be the kind of like the back light, which I mean, really what it is, is just a you know weaker rim light, basically. And I'm going to grab my cell shader, command, click and drag to duplicate that. Make sure that's underneath the uh, uh, folder here. Grab the Fresnel again. And we're not going to change anything to Fresnel. Basically, the only thing we're going to need to do, let's let's just turn everything else off. And maybe we'll just change this. Uh, to add again. So now we're just seeing where this backlight is. So you can see that you're just seeing all the Fresnel. So what we're going to do is change this to layer mask again. And now you see the, the same highlight we had before. But if we want to change this so it's actually down here, all we need to do is just reverse gradient knots here. So now we have it on the bottom. And again, this is all based on the diffuse here and also the Fresnel. So I'll just remove this knot, maybe make this a little bit softer. So something like that. So we get this really nice soft kind of uh, Fresnel uh, only isolated to where the darker areas of the cell shader is. And maybe we'll change this. Uh, maybe we'll sample this color and make it a little brighter. So now we have this really nice kind of back rim light here, which is really cool. So now what we can do is if we want to turn back on our rim light, turn back on our lines, this is helping our lines kind of even show up a little bit more. And we can also adjust the, the actual overall transparency of this backlight group, backlight folder to get whatever level of kind of highlight we want. So we have this hot specular, we have a nice soft rim light, and again, this is all customizable. You can adjust to your heart's content what all of these little, uh, all these little uh, specular highlights and all that stuff look like. Okay. All right. So we're getting, we're, this is looking really nice so far, right? So what I'm going to do is kind of finish the look by adding a little bit of that really nice painterly kind of texture, because right now this is a little bit too perfect, right? We don't 
have that sense that this looks like it was like hand painted or, you know, brushed or anything like that. And there's actually a really simple way to kind of break up the gradient or your cell shader here. And it's using the bump channel. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just turn on the bump. And what I'm going to do is use a layer shader for this as well, because I know I'm going to layer up some noises. And every time you work with a noise shader, it's always good to layer up multiple noises. So you don't have it look so on like, so perfect. Like, Oh, that's definitely a booyah noise shader, you know, but if you layer things up, it's going to look a little bit more organic. Okay. So there's my layer shader. Let's just name this uh, noise. Go to our shader here and let's just grab a noise. Okay. And what you're going to see is we're just adding some bump here and it's looking kind of cruddy, <laughs> but what I'm going to do is go into my luminance and what's going on is the Fresnel is actually using the bump and I don't want the Fresnel to use the bump. So I'm going to uncheck that on all of my Fresnels here. So I just want to, I don't want to break up the uniformity of the actual highlights here. Okay. But what I do want to do is use the bump in the cell shader. I want it to be able to break up the cell shader here. So what I'm going to do is just check on use bump. And immediately you can see that now that noise shader is affecting and adding a little bumpy roughness to our diffuse here in our cell shader. Okay. So the other thing that's showing up is just the bump on the specular here, but I'm just going to leave that for now. If you wanted to bring down the bump strength and how it's affecting the, uh, the specular, just bring that down to zero, but I'm just going to leave that uh, for now. And now what we can do is start manipulating the strength here as well as the different noises we have piled up here. Right now, this just looks kind of terrible. Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and change the noise that we're using here. So for our first noise, let's just use the default noise shader. But what we're going to do is bring up the scale to really high, say like 1200. And now you're seeing it's way more subtle. You see like a slight little wave here. If I turn off the bump and turn it back on, you can see that subtle difference there. Okay. So we're, we're kind of getting there. All right. So what we're going to do is bring up this contrast to say 40, get a nice round number. So now you're seeing a little bit more of the waviness that this noise shader is kind of is, is adding to this. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is add another noise to this. So here's my first noise. I'm going to command click and drag to add a new noise. And let's just go ahead and set this to overlay. All right. And now what I can do is go into this noise, this new noise and change this to a different type of noise. And if I click this button here, you can see all the different types of noises we have here. Uh, so what I'm actually going to use is the blistered turbulence right there. Cause it's, it looks kind of painterly even. And what I'm going to do is bring the scale pretty far down. Okay and maybe remove some of the detail from this noise. And we can do that by changing the octaves. You can see as I bring this down, we're removing some of the detail. So the difference between like five and two, you can see more of that kind of break up there. So I'm just gonna leave this at two. And we've got the scale way down. Let's change the Y scale to say 500. So it's kind of stretches out a little bit. And you can see as we're layering these two noises already, it's kind of looking a little bit more painterly. Okay. So looking pretty cool so far. And let's just leave the contrast at 40. And I think this is all looking good so far. Let's maybe bring down the Y scale and see what that looks like. All right. So we're kind of breaking it up a little bit. It kind of reminds me of like one of those kind of hippy dippy, like tie dye bowling balls so far. Uh, but we're getting there. We're going to load up some more noise here, bring on some more noise. And let me just command click and drag to duplicate the noise one more time. And let's set this to overlay as well, or maybe even multiply. We can kind of play around with this later. Let's just change this to overlay for now. And we'll go into this noise. And for this noise, let's choose a fun sounding name like stupor. Uh, so right here and just immediately, this really looks kind of whacked out. doesn't look all that great. Let's bring back the octaves to the default number of five. And again, you can see this kind of looks kind of painterly in a way. You can see these kind of little brush marks almost. And what I'm going to do for this 
is just bring back this relative scale to default. I'm just going to right click on these up and down arrows to bring that back to default. And let's just bring the global scale a little bit smaller to say 500 and maybe bring down the contrast a little bit. So maybe something like that. Maybe we'll up the, the brightness too. Okay. So now we're kind of getting this painterly look. Let's go to the noise and let's just bring down the opacity of this layer here. Okay. And maybe instead of building up and making this darker, let's try a different blending mode like screen. And let's see what that looks like. I think that's looking a lot better. Let's try screen on this other noise. And I think I'm liking that a lot better where we're kind of lightening the overall load of some of these. And maybe we increase the opacity of that top screen with the stupor. And now we got this really cool kind of brushed kind of look here looking really good. And let's maybe see what this looks like if we increase the strength really high to say 100%. Now you can really get this sense of like this grungy brushy kind of, of action going on here, which is really cool. Maybe, you know, 75 is good right there. Um, maybe we go into the screen, maybe bring down the octaves so it's less detail. And that, that doesn't, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> so maybe something like this. Um, maybe in increase the brightness a little bit more. And I'm digging that. I'm, I'm liking that. Again, you can keep tweaking this forever. Again, I'm going to spare you for this, <laughs> of course. But let's go back into our luminance. And just like we added noise to our bump, Let's maybe add some noise just for like a nice finishing touch to our cell shader spider verse stack here. So I'm going to go to shader. Let's go to noise. Let's just bring this out and just have this as the topmost layer. Let's go into this noise and let's choose a different type of noise. Like, uh, let's do wavy turbulence here. And this kind of looks kind of painterly as well. And let's increase the scale to say 1200. And let's bring down the octaves, just kind of smooth this out a little bit, say to two. And maybe just increase the contrast a little bit. And let's set this noise to multiply. And now we have like these kind of more, it's more, it's less uniform, this cell shader action. It looks a little bit more grungy. Uh, and maybe we just bring down the strength of this to say, you know, 40. And I'm liking that. So let's just toggle that on and off. And it's just a very subtle thing. Maybe we choose screen if we want. And that's not, no, that's not looking good. Maybe dodge. You can just, I mean, a lot of this building up of all these things were just kind of testing around with different blending modes and seeing what looked best. So maybe, you know, burn looks better than overlay. But you can see how just adding that little bit of noise helps kind of break up the uniformity overall, okay? And for a finishing touch, let's add some ambient occlusion. And what I'm gonna do is just layer this into our luminance here. So let's go to effects, ambient occlusion, and let's set this to multiply. So now we have really nice shading on our, let's just toggle this on and off, on our model here, okay? So really nice baked in ambient occlusion. Maybe we bring down the maximum ray length or how far that ambient occlusion travels across the surface of our object. And there we go. Now say you think this is a little bit too dark, okay? And just like you would if you layered up a bunch of things in Photoshop, what you could do is use like an adjustment layer and kind of pump up the, the saturation or the brightness. Well, we can do the same thing going into the effect panel here and maybe bringing in a hue, saturation, and lightness, or the brightness, contrast, and gamma. So maybe we can brighten this up with the bright, uh, brighter gamma, add a little bit more contrast here, and there you go. We already, we're already looking way more red, and maybe we just decrease the saturation a little bit, or pump up the saturation, so it's really, really red, and maybe we want to change this to like uh, the darker purple kind of... Uh, Spider-Man if we want. Let's try to find the purple in here. There's purple. So there you got your purple uh, Spider-Man. Whatever the name of that that darker Spider-Man is. Uh, let's just move that back to 0%. Uh, maybe get a little bit more pinky. A little pinky Spider-Man. Or a little bit more, you know, orangish Spider-Man. 
basically, I just want to show you that you can adjust all of these using hue, saturation, and lightness uh, effects here and just be able to adjust all of these different things to get the exact type of color and look that you want. And that's looking pretty dang good, if I do say so myself, that color. Uh, but again, tweak this forever. You know, I'm, I'm right now that as I'm adjusting these things, maybe I want to bring up the lines there a little bit more. Um, but yeah, all right. So now the great thing, let's just close this out. Great thing about this is if I move this light around, you can see how this kind of changes with the direction of that light. So no matter where I put the light, we're always going to have a highlight. We're always going to have that back rim light and everything's going to look pretty good. Okay. So again, you're seeing the nice little uh, specular hit of that little tile going on there. And something you're going to notice is that our dots are looking kind of squished. So if you want to prevent that, let's just go into our dots. Uh, that's in our reflectance, go into layer mask. What we're going to do is just kind of squash down the U scale or sorry, let's, let's just squash down the V scale there. And now we're going to squash that down and now it's going to be more uniform here. So we can do that in all of our dots in all of our speculars. If you would like, I'm not going to go through all of them, but say, you know, 65 and that's looking good. Uh, and you know, keep adjusting things, playing around, maybe add little tints, uh, maybe a blue highlight or something down here, add some nice little tints to your rim. And again, if you want to add color to your rim highlights, you would add that color into your actual Fresnel. Okay. So now you can see that this is getting a little bit more bluish on that. I'm just going to undo that. Um, but yeah, all right, so I promised to show you how to do this using something other than Sketch and Tune because if you don't have Sketch and Tune, you do not have the cell shader. So what I'm gonna do is show you very quickly how you can recreate this without using the cell shader. And I have a tutorial all about this on my website, uh, but I'll show you really quickly how to do this. So let's just go and let's delete this shader and whoop, let's just delete it from our actual shader ball. I'm going to double click, create a new material and apply it there. So just take a snapshot of how the light is affecting all of this stuff. And I'm just going to double click, turn off the color, turn off the reflectance and just go into the luminance. So we don't have a cell shader in Cinema 4D light, right? But we do have something else that allows us to take the diffuse channel and pump it into our luminance here. And that effect is called Lumis. And you can see basically we just pump back in the diffuse channel using the Lumis shader. All right. So what we're going to do now is basically just take the Lumis shader and we're going to quantize this down into different colors, basically going to colorize it. And Cinema 4D just happens to have something called a colorizer that allows you to take that information, that black and white information that's coming from the Luma, uh, Lumis shader and adjust the gradient knots here. All right. So now what we can do if we want to get that Spider-Man again, the default colors on these are just awful, just awful default colors. Um, but we can change this to the red, right? And adjust all of these gradient knots. Maybe make this a little bit darker red, a little bit brighter red. And there we go. And again, we have the same kind of setup where we can adjust the interpolation of the smoothness of these dot uh, of these uh, little knots here. And basically there is your your cell shader. If you really want sharp shaded edges, just bring down the uh, the knots, the circle knots there. And let's just move this light around so we can see more of this Something like that. And this still works with the bump and all that good stuff. So that's basically it in how you can uh, create the cell shader using a combination of Loomis and a colorizer. Basically you just then inst instead of using a uh, cell shader, just use this colorizer and layer everything up uh, using the same workflow that I just showed you. So if I go into the spider verse, basically this cell here, you'd replace with the colorizer and the Loomis, same there, same there. Basically, wherever the cell shaders are, you would just place in that colorized Loomis and you'd get that same kind of effect, okay? And if you have any other questions, be sure to check out my other tutorial, which I'll link to in the, in the little description section of how you can get 
the cell shader and rebuild it with that Lumos and the colorizer and, and really go more in depth into it. All right, so that's it. That's how you can get into the shader verse and get your own Spider-Man shader in here. And another good thing to do is when you're using the shader ball here, also, I just have like a whole bunch of primitives here, right there. And it's just good to see how this looks with different objects. So here's just a collection of objects. Let's place the Spider-Verse texture on those primitives. And you can see exactly what this looks like on different textures or uh, different uh, objects, okay? So you can see that something goofy is happening with our dots here. So we'd have to go in and maybe squashing those dots down was a bad move. So let's just go and bring up the tiles uh, to 100% and get those circles less flat, okay? So maybe we need to scale it down on the U instead of the V. So depending on what object you're applying this whole shader to, you might have to go in and tweak certain sizes of how big those dots are. If those dots are squashed down, you'll have to adjust these things as well. Maybe make the, the size of the dots a little bit bigger, but it's all completely customizable. And again, depending on what your model is, the, the changes are just something that you're gonna have to do just to adapt to the, the UVs of those different objects. But with that being said, have fun with this. I hope you learned something about layering up and getting really into the shader system of Cinema 4D. All right, so there you go. That's my little workflow for how to get into the Spider-Verse type of textures. I kind of introduced you into the Shader-Verse with stacking up a bunch of different shaders together and using something I've never really used before, which is the projection shader. So it's always helpful to go in and dive into all of those little effects and see what these shaders do because there's a lot that comes in with standard Cinema 4D renderer. And you know, just like Octane or Redshift has this whole wide variety of different shaders, sometimes we tend to neglect the, the native sh shaders that are inside of Cinema 4D, show them some love, and hopefully they can help you recreate something, some other kind of texture in the future. But if you have any questions on anything I covered in this tutorial, leave them in the comments section below. And you know I love seeing what you're making, so be sure if you create your own little Spider-Verse, your little Spider-Man pig or Pikachu or whatever, I want to see it. Tag me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, all over the interwebs, on the MySpace, and show me what you're working on. Always love to see what you guys are creating. And it's very important for you guys to create, so let me see it. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial, as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like it, please like this video. If you like my channel, please subscribe and you'll keep seeing me every time you ding that little subscription bell and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye everybody.